purpose of the Impress system is to assist members in their professional development. So I support these changes. I think these changes will help to focus members on the real purpose, which is their own professional development. And giving responsibility for it to the salaries and allowances tribunal, taking it out of the Premier's office? Now, I think that's correct. Uh, it's a good thing provided that the public servants have a good understanding of the requirements and characteristics of a member's job. They seem to have cracked down on spouses' travel, but uh, there'll be, uh, there'll be uh, sort of more scrutiny than previous now. Well, spouse travel, it's a relic of a bygone age, really. It doesn't apply in business, it doesn't apply in the rest of the public sector. Why should it apply to politicians? So what, uh, suspect uh, you wouldn't be unhappy if it was dropped altogether? Well, I wouldn't be unhappy if it was dropped altogether. The Premier's taken a halfway house approach where he said you have to justify it and you can't use more than a certain proportion. But I wouldn't be unhappy if it went altogether. And is the amount, is the $24,000 or roughly, is that an adequate amount for MPs travel over a parliamentary term? I think it's an adequate amount for the ordinary purposes of a Member of Parliament and their professional development. There is a particular circumstance with regard to shadow ministers uh, who have much less travel available to them than government ministers. Now that might not affect every shadow minister, but it certainly has an impact on, for example, the shadow minister for regional development. It's a big state, a third of a continent, and our shadow minister for regional development uh, doesn't have anything like the travel entitlements or the access to the government jet uh, that the minister for regional development has. Have you had a chance to scrutinise that infrastructure report from the Public Accounts Committee? Uh, no, I haven't had a chance to look at it, but I do think uh, this state needs a planned approach to infrastructure. We need a state infrastructure strategy. Uh, what we've got from this government is the Royalties to Regions program, which is very much a political program for the National Party, and we've got the Premier's pet projects. There's a real danger that basic core infrastructure, like the electricity network, will be ignored under the Premier's approach. But uh, they also proposed, well, they also pointed out that millions of dollars could be wasted uh, because of uh, perhaps a lack of rigour in some, some projects. So, I mean, should, uh, should infrastructure projects in general terms far more rigour attached before they uh, sort of start off on, on the project itself? Yeah, there's a real need for improvement in the public sector's management of infrastructure processes. I'll better start that again. Uh, there's a real need for improvement in the public sector's management of infrastructure projects. Uh, there's also a pressing requirement for improvement in the processes of decision making. How does the government choose one infrastructure project over another? We need a plan for the next 10 years or the next 20 years to guide governments in that decision making. What we've got at the moment is the Premier's pet projects and the National Party's port barrelling. That's not a good plan for the future of the state.